Hey, hey, hey there, everyone. It's Rod Bergeron back here with you, and we're talking about painting for absolute beginners. So today we're going to look at some of my watercolor stuff and just have a real quick look at some of the tools and some of the things that I use. All right, so uh, let's start with brushes. Um, brushes are many, many different kinds of brushes, every possible different price point and you can really spend a lot of money on brushes but I'm here to tell you that you really don't need to all right so I have um, a couple of different brushes with me here these are so these three right here are flat brushes and to tell if a brush is flat we look at the space uh, we look at where the metal joins the bristles and if where the metal joins the bristles is flattened down, then that's going to be a flat brush. Pretty simple, right? So again, this one's a flat brush. Where the metal joins the bristles, it's flat. All right? So the opposite of that is a round brush. And you can see where the metal meets the bristles, it's rounded. All right? Lots of different sizes and shapes of round brushes. This one here would be uh, number five or six, which is about the biggest round brush that I use when I'm using watercolor. And um, this one here is a one. So you see there's a number one on there. So very, very few bristles, a very, very small fine line with a number one. This one here is a Winsor Newton number four. And this one here would be a two. Uh, but there's no number on that one all right so lots of different brushes but basically in watercolor you're going to need um, really just though those brushes and I would say uh, the brushes that I use the most are probably just those two brushes a number four and a flat quarter inch all right so those are probably the two brushes that I use the most and to tell you the truth when I go outside when I'm doing in plein air I probably don't take any more than those two brushes and if I was really pressed for time um, or I had a you know I, I didn't want to carry too much with me I would really only take this one singular brush all right so we'll talk later about what each one of these brushes will do um, I always tell students you know don't go out and buy all these brushes all right if you buy a paint kit and has a brush in it use it for a while and see what it does if it doesn't do what you want it to do then go and buy a different brush but for the most part just deal with the brushes that are in the kit and uh, you'll see some of the things that we're going to do in painting for absolute beginners and you can decide if you want to go out and spend the money on on a new brush all right a brush can range anywhere from a couple of dollars at a dollar store it could be a couple of dollars at walmart or you could go and buy yourself a Winsor Newton brush for maybe $25 or $35, all right? Or even more. Uh, you, you, brushes can be a ridiculous price. Right. Okay, so after brushes, we should talk about paint for a minute. And I have here two paint palettes. This paint palette that is very, very clean is a new one because I misplaced my one that had black and white in it. Um, and this is a palette that I've had for many many years you'll see a piece of it is broken off and it's kind of dirty I don't get into cleaning my palettes off I think it's a huge waste of money it's a huge waste of paint all of this paint that's dried on here is all usable watercolor paint never fully hardens so you can come back to it years and years later and reuse it all right so all this paint that's in here originally was in a tube and Tubes of watercolor paint is probably the most versatile and the cheapest way to buy paint, all right? So when I wanna use, when I need more crimson red, I just squeeze it into here and I let it dry and it will completely harden. And it will be just as hard as any of these in just a matter of a, a day or so. If you put it in here and let it sit for a day or so and came back, it would be completely hard, all right? These here I put in uh, two or three days ago and they're rock hard now. All right, so you buy tubes of paint, you squeeze out quite a bit into your palette 
and then you just let it harden and the next time you go to paint it'll be rock hard all right so um, I, I would suggest to you to buy tubes of paint rather than uh, pellets or any other kind um, it just seems to go a little bit further and it seems to last a little bit longer the other thing about watercolor paint though is it is very inexpensive you can buy a regular set you know that has the little hard pellets in it for usually under 10 bucks for uh, you know an eight color set I would suggest that if you're starting to do painting just buy yourself a cheap most inexpensive set don't go and buy yourself a whole bunch of tubes uh, that you may never use get yourself an inexpensive set and if you like it when that gets done go and buy yourself some more all right so I work a little bit differently than other people in that I have a color palette and I have a black and white palette all right um, we'll get into why it is that I do that later but I tend to find that if I put white into here or I put black into one of these or white into one of these the white will become dirty very very quickly and the black will mix in with everything else and just make a mucky mess so um, I use two palettes I keep them um, separated inside of my little paint tin by just an old piece of paper and I just set that in there and put them in a paint tin there's no reason to clean watercolor palettes uh, dry it off certainly if you're putting it into a bag or something but there's no reason to clean this off all right so that's um, palettes and paint let's talk for a minute about paper so watercolor paper I use Canson watercolor paper I find it's the best it's the most economical um, it's 140 pound you should probably always look for about 140 pound paper uh, this paper is 9 by 12 inches which cuts really nicely in half to become a uh, something that you could use to uh, make a 5 by 7 painting with um, but if you're working in this size uh, this Canson paper uh, for me it's one of the best papers I use it to draw on I use it to paint on I use it for multimedia pieces I use it for pastel I use it for acrylic paint uh, it's very very versatile and um, it really has a lot of different uses so I would suggest uh, Canson watercolor paper 30 sheets in this thing in this pad so 30 sheets is probably ten dollars or less I think I got these for about eight eighty eight. All right, so a super good price. Thirty sheets will last you a long time, and um, really, really versatile. Get yourself some Canson watercolor paper. Any watercolor paper will do. I would suggest to you that you want something that's one hundred and forty pounds or higher. You don't want to use a ninety pound paper. But if you have ninety pound paper, don't throw it in the garbage and go buy one hundred and forty pound just because Rod said so use the 90 pound paper for experimenting on all right use it for doing color charts use it for you know figuring out composition all that kind of thing or use it for drawing on right um, but 90 pound paper is not going to be as good as 140 pound paper and at a later date i'll explain to you what 140 pound means just know that 140 pound paper is thicker than 90 pound paper and 140 pound paper is not as thick or not as uh uh, heavy and usable as say something that would be say 200 or 300 pounds all right so Canson watercolor paper I use it for drawing I use it for painting multi 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 uses all right all right so we talked about palettes we talked about paint we talked about paper and uh, we've talked about brushes so th those are the main things other than getting yourself some water and getting yourself a little container this is just an old coffee container um, whatever kind of container will work for you margarine container any kind of a plastic container I would sort of resist using glass get a plastic container okay so I want to show you what happens to watercolor paper when we get it wet so this is just that same piece of watercolor paper you've seen a couple of seconds ago and this is my container of water and I'm just going to pour some on here so you can see what happens 
right? So you see how that, okay, so you see that water, it just piles up there in that one little spot. And it doesn't run off to any other places. It doesn't get anything else wet. And you can simply just take a regular paper towel and put it in here and it will just suck that water right out of there. All right? You take it and just put it right on and it will just take that water right off. And when you touch this, it's barely damp. All right? And I mean, it's it's bit, like if, if I leave that for another 10 seconds, it won't feel damp at all. All right? So why is this important, Rod? Why do I need to know this? Well, if I took a paintbrush and I wanted to paint a still life, and in that still life was an orange, I can just paint myself a circle with clear water and put a little bit more water in that. Paint myself a circle with clear water. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of orange paint. I'm going to pick up a little bit of orange paint here and I'm just going to touch this brush with this orange paint onto here. And you'll see the paint is not leaving that circle. So where I painted my orange, the paint will not go outside of that area. That's a really, really important thing to understand in painting. If you can understand that the watercolor paper will hold that water only in that area and it won't let the paint come outside of that area, that's the main trick to watercolor painting. So whether it's I'm painting this orange, or if I was painting a house, or if I was painting a tree, when I paint that shape onto the page, that watercolor paint cannot leave that area. All right, so really ingrain that in your thinking about watercolor. It's about the paper. The paper will keep the paint where you put it, unless you want to go someplace else. All right, I'm going to change back over to the above view now. Okay, so we've switched views and I'm back with the above view. And I want you to think about, we're going to do a, uh, we're working on just as a little miniature still life here. Uh, we're going to think about taking some yellow or perhaps some sienna, whatever, and um, we're going to make a banana on here. All right, so we're not trying to, this is painting for absolute beginners. We're not trying to look at a real banana and copy a real banana. I want you to just fake this, all right? And this is just basic painting a shape. I want you to take a round brush, get a lot of water on it, and then just paint with clear water the shape of a banana, just like you did with the orange before. Right? We're not trying to, again, we're not trying to make a masterpiece. We're trying to practice the art of watercolor painting, practice painting in general. Right? So I'm just going to paint a, wall, a banana shape on here. And then I'm going to wet my brush again, pick up a good amount of water, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of this golden kind of a color, sienna, I believe. Gonna pick it up on the brush. So if you put a lot, if you put more water in there, it becomes more diluted. We're gonna start off with it fairly diluted, and I'm just going to drop this in on one end of my banana. I'm gonna put a little bit more in there. So again, this is wet on wet, very wet paint on a wet page. The technique is wet on wet. 
And we're going to learn lots of different techniques here in painting for absolute beginners. This is going to be the first one, all right? Now, if you pick up your page and you give it a gentle tip, you'll see that the water that with the paint on it will run all the way down to whatever the shape that you painted for your banana is. All right, and it'll fill in everywhere that you wet. And you can say, okay, I want my banana to be a little bit yellower on the bottom, so I'm gonna leave the paint down there to dry, All right? You could tip it up on something, force the paint to come down here and dry across here. Or you could also say, this isn't quite, um, I got a little bit of a mess there, but you can just sort of push the paint right off. You can pick up some more paint and say it's not dark enough. It's not the color I'm looking for. I'm gonna put a little bit more paint on each end. And I'm just gonna give it another little tip. Maybe I want darker on the bottom. Maybe I want darker on the top, however it is. And I'm just going to set it down and I'm going to walk away from it and come back a little while later. Or you can keep adding more color to it. You could come and you could say, you know, this, this banana has a little brown spot on it. So I'm gonna pick up some of my brown here. Again, I'm just taking a wet brush, putting it into the paint, give it a little swirl around until you start to see the color, however thick it is that you want it to be. And remember, this is painting for absolute beginners, so I want you to experiment. And I think there's a little bit of brown across here where somebody's dropped this banana, okay? So now I'm just gonna leave it sit. And I'm gonna come back to it later, right? But for right now, I want you to do this all over the page. I want you to put apples, I want you to put oranges, bananas, limes, lemons, whatever it is that you can think of. Paint it on in the shape with just clear water and then mix up some paint and put it onto that shape and then let it dry, all right? And then come back and look at it later. Don't be afraid to put a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green on a lime or a lemon and let them mix together a little bit. The same with oranges, bananas, whatever it might be, all right? Have some fun with it. Don't get too caught up in it. Just have a little bit of fun with this. So if you like this video, please click like. If you picked up a tip or a trick from it, I would really appreciate hearing from you. Please let me know in the comment section. Um, I really appreciate every comment and every like that I get. And if you don't currently subscribe to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, thanks a lot for checking out my video. I'll see you again next time.